I want to create some drop shadows for these that are that are going to be somewhat realistic. And I was actually working with Tony the other day on this, and he was like, "Man, you know, drop shadows are they they look so cool, but they're they hard, they're hard to do correctly. They're hard to do so they actually look real." And I thought it'd be a wonderful thing to teach you guys in this class because they are so difficult to do real. Um, one thing you want to remember whenever you're creating a drop shadow of a pr product or whatever it is, the real key to making them look realistic is using many, many layers. A lot of people try to get this done with just one layer. They try to just paint a black surface right under something and make it look good. It's almost impossible. You're going to be creating a ton of layers to make something look realistic. So we'll show you how to do it. First thing I want to do, let's create a new layer here. And I want to make a selection right underneath our Bose headphone. You know what? In fact, I'm going to make a selection around the headphones. There we go. Just to get a good idea. And then we're going to shrink it down. And I'm going to bring that right down there. So I want basically a, a reflection of whatever I have, a reflection of that product. OK. So on this layer, let's go ahead and group this with itself. I'm going to just call this shadow. All right, on this layer, what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Shift Delete, and we're going to fill this with black and hit OK. All right, so this is basically the start. We're going to be doing this a bunch of times. So now that we've filled that with black, what I'm going to do is lower the opacity down. So I'm going to hit V on my keyboard and the number 2. That'll bring me down to 20%. So if you were just you know, kind of lazy or maybe you didn't know what you do, were doing or you know, just kind of new to this, you might just add a blur to this and then, and then call that done. Like that's, that's drop shadow. And I see this a lot. I see it in magazines. You, you really do. You see it all the time. Um, that's, that's what a lot of people you know, would call a drop shadow. But it doesn't look real. It doesn't look like it's you know, actually a, a real shadow. It looks like a Photoshop shadow. So our goal is to take what we have now and turn it into something that actually looks real. So the key here, again, is use a lot of different layers. And we want to focus shadows. Shadows and light are very complicated. They get darker and more intense the closer you get to a product. And they get softer and lighter the farther you get from the product. So we want to build that into our layers. So I'm just going to make a few duplicates of this. We're going to hit Control or Command J to duplicate that. And I'm going to bring this guy in. All right, and let's just move it up a little bit. Control or Command J, we'll do that again. I'm going to bring this in and move this up a little bit. So you can see already we're starting to get something that's going to be the makings of a more realistic shadow. All right, we're going to hit Control or Command J again, and I'm going to stretch this out because we have this area that needs to be taken care of as well, right? There we go. All right, and we'll do it one more time here. All right, and noticing, notice I'm kind of focusing on the top part of the image. We're, this is not completely symmetrical. I'm making it look as though the product has depth in the z-axis by focusing the shadow towards the top. All right. So this looks great. This is actually it's a really good start of a shadow. And you can see, I mean, if you were to blur, blur your eyes or whatever, you can see this is already starting to look more real than my original shadow. So now with this, I have a, a lot of different options. I want to start blurring each of these different layers. But I want to blur them at different amounts. The layers that are closer to the edges need to be blurred more. The layers that are closer to the middle need to be blurred less. So I can just go about creating Gaussian blurs if I want, or I can convert these into smart objects, and then I can adjust my blurs afterwards, which is very helpful. So has everyone worked with smart objects before? OK, cool. So smart objects allow you to use smart filters, which in this case is perfect. So I'm going to right click on each of those and go down to Convert to Smart Object on each one of them. There we go. And now, after they're all smart objects, I can apply a blur. So I'm going to go to a Gaussian blur, and we're going to choose a large blur. We're going to do a radius of 106, and I'm going to continue making the radius smaller and smaller. But you can see, I can, tur I can turn off my Gaussian blur at any point in time, or I can just double click right here, and I can change it at any point in time as well. All right, I'll also be able to change my opacity and the location of each one of these points. So each one of these is kind of building up. There we go. They're all building up to create a shadow that has a lot more depth than the original. 
All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and give that one a blur too. All right, very nice. Now I can see, you know, starting to look through this guy, the edge is a little bit too well defined. Can you, you can see the edge? Not a problem. I'm just gonna double click back on my Gaussian blur and I'm gonna increase that edge a little bit more. There we go. And we're starting to see that a little bit better. This one looks pretty good, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a little bit more of a blur as well. All right, somewhere right in between that kind of focuses. There we are. And now I'm gonna go through and start, let's just duplicate this. Now that we have this layer, we're gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna transform it, make it a little bit smaller. All right. And we're gonna move this up just a little bit. There we go. Now since I'm putting such a, a relatively dark center into this blur, sorry, into the shadow, I wanna be moving it up a little bit. So after I'm done with this, we're gonna move it up just a little bit. All right, and here you can see I can change my opacity with each of these layers to fit just about what it, they need for the image. Okay, now I've got my shadow. I'm gonna start moving it around a little bit. I can move it up till it starts to join with my actual object. And if it's not perfect here, let's say we wanted it down there. If it's not perfect, because in this case, I think it needs to be shrinked, we can do the entire shrinking process, there we go, with the group. We can bring this all up, I'm gonna hit enter there. It's going to go ahead and apply that, and then it's going to reapply all of my smart filters. There we go. I always love when people say something and then there's just this ripple of, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so there's our drop shadow. And it does, it looks great, but it's not quite there yet. And the reason is, we want to, we're comparing the darkness of this blue here, sorry, the darkness of the actual headphones with the darkness of the shadow. And if they're close, they need to be similar. The darkness of the headphones needs to be similar with the shadow. So instead of creating like 10 different layers and doing this all again, what I'm gonna do is duplicate this entire shadow group, okay? Now I'm just going to merge it with itself. And it's going to turn all those different layers into one layer. All right, let's hit Control or Command E, and that's going to merge this with itself. So what I mean by creating a lot of layers is we're gonna, we're really creating a lot of layers. So I created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers in here. Then I duplicated that. So this is basically the culmination of seven more layers. And we're gonna transform this and bring this back in now. So it's really starting to bring on a lot, a lot of depth. All right, we do have a, a very thin white line just under our headphones. So I'm gonna bring my layer mask up just a little bit. Can you guys see how that helped out? Yeah. That does not, <laughs> that's not looking real. That's looking a little bit better. All right, so we've got a shadow copy looking good. I'm just gonna duplicate it again. Command T to make this a little bit smaller. And my goal here is to make it look as though these headphones are just resting on the ground or the, the surface rather that I have underneath. All right, and I can use as many layers as I'd like to get there. I'm not restricted in any way. All right, let's just move this up a little bit more. There we go. All right, and this is gonna go up as well, just a little bit, because I want, I want this area to look like it's just touching the ground. You can see if I'm too far down, it starts to look, it starts to look off, but it, the farther up I go, the more it starts to look real. There we go, and that's looking pretty good. 